Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Shit Moms Won't Say. Uh, I have a friend on tonight, uh, and she has had quite the journey into motherhood. So uh, it's not something that lots of people talk about. These are not things that many people would even be able to, like, mentally survive. However, uh, she did. She's here. She's funnier than ever. Uh, three ectopic pregnancies, three miscarriages, a baby, an adoption, and then another baby. I just want to make sure everybody got that. A baby, an adoption, and then another baby. Uh, now, the proud mommy of three grown-ass kids, Miss Liz <laughs> Zimmerman. Hello. You got to, like, pause for applause, right? I don't know who's, like, applauding out there, but I'm sure somebody... You and I are both theater performers, so I'm sure, you know, somebody out there is cheering us on. That's In our minds, they're definitely applauding. In our minds. Uh, before we get into the Big Mom 3, I want to call you out on something because before this I said, Liz, remind me, how old How old are your kids? Um, and what did, what did you say to me? I'm not, <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, you think... still have not actually given me <laughs> no, exact I think, numbers. I think I'm 99% sure that they're 24... 28 and 31. Okay. Well, let's hope they don't watch. You don't want them to watch this anyway, so they they'll know. never know. I, they're lucky if I get their names right, so they, they're used to this. There you go. Even better. All right, let's 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 jump into the Big Mom 3. Uh, so first question of the Big Mom 3, did you always know you wanted to be a mom? I still don't know. <laughs> It's still confusing. Your yeah, oldest is 31. You're still not sure. No, it, it depends what day you ask me. You know, the, there were times when, yes, I desperately wanted to be a mother. I, I went through a lot to become a mother. Um, yeah. And then there were days where, like, why the hell did I want to do this? <laughs> what was wrong, what's wrong with me? I, my life would have been so much simpler had I you know, not had kids. So, yeah, it, it changes from day to day. What's today? What's your answer today? Today's a good day. Today's oh, good. A, no, today I'm glad. You know, I they they've grown up into beautiful human beings, and and a lot of the stuff that we went through ended up being worth it. You know, it was like okay, you know, we came through the other side. Everybody's okay. It was well worth it. But there was there, we had some rough times. You had some times, yeah. All right. Well, good. Good answer. I wasn't expecting that answer. Good answer. Uh, second question of the big mom three. What is the shittiest or most backhanded piece of advice you have ever gotten from another mother or parent? <laughs> <laughs> so many. So, um, so many terrible people out there. They really are. Mm -hmm. Well, in, in context, um, I think the the one I had the most trouble with was why are you talking to your kids like they're adults? They don't understand what you're saying. And I was like, well, if I don't talk to them like an adult, then they're never going to understand what I'm saying. It like as really, babies or like as when they're yeah, a little, I never did baby talk. Like, you know, oh. I, you know, I, I never talked down to my kids. I always, my parents were always using adult vocabulary around me. And so I used adult vocabulary around my kids. And I was hanging out with women that weren't, not, weren't necessarily educated as, as much as my parents had been. And so they did not use big words is the way, the way they, they described it. And they, they thought I was, I don't know whether they thought there was, I was being arrogant or showing off or whatever, but they, they were, offended by the fact that I was talking to my kids at such a high level. Fuck them. I was like, you know what I can't stand? So my wife and I talk about this all the time when parents make up words for things that have words, 
Yeah, so like we urinated and we defecated. Right. And... That's your penis and your vagina. It's exactly. not your, you know, Mickey and Mary. Shout out to my best friend. That's what his family called it. Um, you know, use your words. It's yeah. it's milk. It's breast. It's you know, it's not like boobies and da, da, yeah, like that's it's your nipple, it's a pacifier, it's not a binky. <laughs> Like I, I almost like I don't mind binky because I feel like that's yeah, such a colloquialism. Yeah. Well, it's like it's nothing, right? But like when you're talking about body parts and like anatomy and things that like, God forbid, a child was ever you know in a bad situation, right? We can all assume what I'm talking about, and they came home and they're like, somebody looked at my Mary. What? What the hell like, are you talking do you about? Know, right, exactly. Like, you want your kids to be able to use your words. So, I, I like wasn't hundred percent sure what you meant when you said like I didn't do baby talk. I totally get that, um, and we don't, we don't either in that, in that regard. We, you have I to don't talk think you to should. them. I, otherwise, how are they going to learn the real words? They're not. I, they're going to grow up thinking that it's there's something it's shameful about the real words. Poo, no, it's you're defecating. It's right, right. You took a, you took a big shit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and that was the other thing. In, in my family, the rule was that you you can say any word you want as long as you're not using it to hurt somebody. Oh. So we were allowed to curse. Like my father, who had a very bizarre sense of humor, put up a sign saying, watch your fucking language in this room. <laughs> you know, because they're not using that word to hurt anybody. But if you say to somebody, you moron, you idiot, you shit, then that's hurtful and you shouldn't yeah. be using those words and it doesn't matter whether it's a curse whether you're saying fuck you or you know then you're cursing when you're saying oh fuck that's not really cursing so i was allowed to say whatever i wanted and i let my kids say whatever they wanted and a lot of people had a problem with that too a lot of people have a lot of problems with a lot of things and a lot of people need to calm the fuck down yeah um <laughs> <laughs> third question of the big mom three uh what is a skill or superpower that you had before becoming a mom that you think has really helped you as a mom i don't want to say that i'm psychic but i'm very empathetic yeah to the point where i can tell what people are feeling or thinking just from like verbal nonverbal, you you know body language, nonverbal cues. And I think that that really comes in handy with, especially with infants, because you don't, you know, they can't tell you what they want. So I'm very good at reading people. That's a great skill. What am I, what am I thinking right now? <laughs> <laughs> we can't say it. It's probably I'm not to say that on television. <laughs> It's literally like, this is so fun filming with my friend Liz. That's what I'm thinking about right now. But, you know, a lot of people have deeper thoughts. I seem very content. I, it's I'm more content. Emotional, on an emotional level. It's not on a thought level. It's yeah. like, you know, I can tell you're content. You're happy. You're relaxed. You know, you're at peace. You feel, you look very centered, you know. Oh, thank you. That's the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me on this show. Everybody should pay me more compliments. Um, yeah. <laughs> true you. Thank you. Yeah. If you could all just like pad my ego, that would be terrific. I really appreciate it. Um, theaters are still closed. So I really still need I know, right? a pat on the back. Um, I, to withdraw. I know it's crazy, but this is, you know, we have this platform now, so that's super fun too. Um, so I want to, I want to talk about your, your parenting journey for lack of like a less lame term, right? Because like I said, in, in the little intro, you've gone through things that most women, they, they have nightmares about. They do. And for you to come out on the other side of it and have such a positive attitude, be able to joke and be like, yes, yeah, some days I want to be a mom. Like you worked real freaking hard to become a mom. Uh, so it's three ectopic pregnancies, three miscarriages, like I said, baby, adoption, baby. So a lot uh, of infertility treatments, a lot of infertility hormones. treatments. So kind yeah. of talk me through it a little bit. Like I said to you, when we were chatting before, like I can never do justice to asking people questions about these things because the, the story is your own, you know? So I, I just want to hear about it. And I think it's something that um, all women should hear about. And if it can help somebody that's going through it, you know, I, I've oftentimes seen posts on Facebook and I'm like, Hey, you need to talk, call me, you know, I, mm. I do know what you're going through, you know? Um, it, I met my, my husband when we were 16. And we got married 
coincidentally on the eighth day of the eighth month of the eighth year we were together. And that wasn't intentional. That was purely by coincidence. You? Yes. So we were not really in a rush to have children, you know, because at 16, you're not thinking about that. At 20, you're not thinking about that. And then we got married and we were about 24. And we figured, you know, let's save up, try to get a house, you know, that type of thing. So we weren't really thinking about kids then either. And then we said, okay, now we're ready. And didn't get pregnant, didn't get pregnant, didn't get pregnant, finally got pregnant, had a miscarriage. Didn't get pregnant, didn't get pregnant, didn't get pregnant, had another miscarriage. And then I had what I thought was a miscarriage. And it, I can't remember exactly what happened, but I knew something was different. It, it was different and I was in pain and I was dizzy and I was weak. And it turned out I had had an ectopic pregnancy and lost my left tube. It was emergency surgery. And um, they had I not gone in when I did, I probably would not be here talking about it. Wow. Yeah, it, it was, uh, it's funny because I fantasize about, you know, living back in the 1600s and what a simple time it was. And then I realized my first ectopic pregnancy, I would have been dead. <laughs> You'd be super dead. You'd be yeah. dead like a million times over if you were in the 1600s. But yeah, I, I wouldn't mind wearing some like of the, you know, the cool hats and things. But aside from that, dead. The dresses. The dresses, you know. I think I'd be one of those, like, you know, like horseback lesbians. I don't know. I, I get where you're going with it. The decotage or whatever. Exactly. A little, a little something. Yeah. But like a a nice pair of pants, but we'd be dead and you'd definitely be dead. I'd probably be dead. dead. Many times over. Yeah. So then, then after that, it got even harder to get. That's my two dogs. Hey, hit mute quick. Hit mute. Yeah, I don't like editing, so people are gonna just hear your dogs barking. <laughs> yeah. That's Louis and Layla. Louis who, and Layla. Yes, who have interrupted many a Zoom meeting. But um, such is life. Yeah, c'est la vie. So we're all oh, right. I was uh, after the ectopic. It got harder to get pregnant because now I only had one tube. Right. So we started doing infertility treatments and they gave me hormones so that I would have more eggs. And um, they started doing procedures, uh, which are really pleasant. You know, like they have this one where they, they shoot dye into you to see if your tube is clear. They don't tell you that because this dye has nowhere else to go, it travels up into your shoulders and you start having this tremendous shoulder pain. And then they they shoot air into your tubes. And the air is worse than the liquid because the air, now you feel like you have gas in your shoulders. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I got very good at at like trying to hypnotize myself into like the Zen, you know, breathing. (laughs) And at one point I was doing the Zen breathing and I'm trying to relax and I'm trying not to feel what's going on. And the doctor's talking to me and I hear the nurse kind of, you know, off in the the distance. I don't think she can hear you. I think she's meditating. (laughs) (laughs) So, (laughs) you know, we we went through a couple of those and you always feel very shocky after those. It's like, you know, your body just is like, there's something foreign was going on in my body, you know, because they have to dilate your cervix and it's, it's a whole pleasant experience. So then I finally, oh no, then another funny story. Um, They said, you know, you really have to take a break. Hmm. So I was going, I went on a vacation. We went uh, on a camping trip in Montana and we were sharing an RV with another couple. And it was our anniversary on 888. And the couple left us alone in the RV because it was our anniversary. Your anniversary, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And nine months later, Stephen was born. Well, Get out. Months, I guess it was 10 months later, May 7th, 1989. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So there was something yeah, like that we when said. You, when you like stop trying, right? Like when you like the stress is off, then you get pregnant. I feel like that happens so often. Yeah, that, you hear that story a lot, but but also 
she gave me Diflucan for the first time for a yeast infection. And I had gotten hundreds of yeast infections. And they you always use the tablets and the monastery yeah. and the gels and all that stuff. Super fun stuff that it's yeah. disgusting. The stuff that doesn't stay inside you. So how the hell is it working? No, it just comes right out. It's really gross. Yeah. It's really gross. Yeah. yeah. So she finally said, oh, they invented this new pill. Here, try this. It's Diflucan. So it treats the yeast infection internally. So I'm thinking maybe I had a yeast infection in my uterus, which was why I wasn't getting pregnant. Oh, interesting. It's possible. I mean, yes, I was very relaxed. It was it was a lovely vacation. You know, we were in, you know, Glacier National Park and Yellowstone National Park. And I just I'm really at peace in the woods. You know, sure. that's really that's really that's my your thing. Zen yeah. place. Yeah. So yeah, that probably had a lot to do with it too. But there's something to be said for the coincidence of having taken the diflucan. So well, and you like, you know, I think that's another thing, you know, that's not talked about enough. Like women know their own bodies, you know. So if you if you feel like perhaps you had a yeast infection in your uterus, like you probably did. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like when you think there's something wrong with your kid and everybody's like, no, 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 no. And you're like, well no, I'm right. Yeah. Um, so I don't, I don't doubt that you were correct about that. It, you know, could be a, a perfect storm of different things, but. Yeah. Well, I'm sure, you know, it's never any one thing, you know? Right. I, of course. I mean, cause like with me, it was the, the not having the extra tube and also having hormonal fluctuations. Like my period was never normal. I was always anywhere from like, 30 to 80 days. I never knew when I was going to get my period. So there were many times I thought I was pregnant when I wasn't, but it was just because I had such weird hormonal fluctuations. So that was always. Yeah. Yeah. My whole life. And I had horrible heart when I was young, I had horrible cramps and stuff. Yeah. Well, so what's weird. So what's weird about that though, you can never really tell. Right. So like for me, I've always had, I've been like the most regular person on the planet. Um, maybe two, no, I guess almost four years ago. I don't even know what time, three years ago, I ended up having a myomectomy because I had terrible fibroids and they'd take them out. So like, I actually can't, I shouldn't carry a baby. I have no interest in doing it anyway. I think it's horrible. Not for me, but like, but you know, like, you know, everybody's like, well, if you have a super regular period, you get pregnant and then you do this and then you do it. Like it doesn't always work that way. No. Women's bodies are complicated. That's why they should be regulated by women. Exactly. Well, shouldn't be regulated at all. No, they should be regulated by the individual woman. Let me rephrase. Exactly. Yes. What do I know? Yeah, but it's true. I mean, you do. That's one of the things when I was talking about being empathetic and and you know, being in touch with nonverbal things. You're in tune with your own body more than anything. Yeah. You know, you know what's normal, what's not normal, and with my second ectopic, I knew the signs. I knew that you get a pain in your shoulder and I, I knew, you know, I, I knew the feeling of, of yeah. so when I started bleeding again and I knew I was pregnant, I was like, wait, no, this is not, this is not normal. This is not another miscarriage. This is an ectopic. And, and luckily we caught that one early. And um, the second ectopic, the, doctor did a, a beautiful job left a, a cat scratch scar and I looked gorgeous I looked like I had a tummy tuck it was wonderful the third ectopic the freaking guy left me with a Frankenstein scar oh no and because I'd been cut three times in the same spot he grabbed some of the skin I guess or the muscle or something to sew it up yeah so now, then I had this lip this lump so never again with the flat stomach and people keep saying well why don't you go have a tummy tuck I said oh no I've been cut three times I'm not getting cut again I'm good I my husband loves me he can deal with it that's Obviously. right <laughs> that's right damn straight <laughs> but yeah no the, so the three ectopics are rough and the you know the um miscarriages they they were disappointing and and it was upsetting emotionally yeah topics were also physically 
there was like an eight to eight week to three month recovery period after them. Wow. Well, I, well you put your like, body through hell. Yeah. You know, you're bleeding internally, you know? And so, you know, I, and then I had endometriosis from all the bleeding internally. Of course. Which then affected my fertility. And so, yeah. Man, so, what a, what a perfect shit storm, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Unreal. But so then, so you got pregnant, you had your first, your first child, then you adopted. Well, no, then I tried. Well, you tried before. to get, yeah. Then I tried to get pregnant again and had two more topics. And that's when the doctor find, and you kind of, and I'm talking to all you infertile women out there. Don't wait for your doctor to say, you got to stop trying. Because that's what finally got me to stop was I was waiting for somebody to say, you stop. really got to stop. This third topic could have killed you. You can't do this anymore. And then you start realizing you don't need to give birth. You can adopt and love a baby just as much. And there are kids out there, you know, everybody's saying, oh, you're gonna wait years, you know, you're gonna get on these lists. And I'm like, well, I don't care if my child is biracial. Uh, so but some people do. We got a baby in four months. And, and oh. then just for you people out there that want to adopt, we, a year after we adopted her, I got a phone call saying, do you want to adopt? We have four, biracial children that we can't place do you want wow. another baby so i'll tell you when they handed me i should change their names to protect the innocent when they handed me my daughter it was no different than when they handed me my son absolutely no different and all children are different personality wise I mean, yes, she did have a few issues, you know. I mean, she was the middle child, which has its problems. Sure. She was the only girl. And she was the only child of color in the family, you know, because everybody else is lily white, blonde hair, blue eyes. Right. So, you know, she, she had her rough moments in life because of that. And I felt very guilty about that for a while because I thought, being that I was Jewish and that like I had been dragged by my heels till my butt bled because the kid found out I was Jewish, that I understood what prejudice was about, but I can hide being Jewish. Mm -hmm. People of color yeah. cannot hide their color. And I don't care what anybody says, they are treated so differently. Yeah. So differently. To the point where I'd be walking around the store with her and the boys, and they would say, Oh, she couldn't possibly be yours. Or who's the father? You know, so I started getting sarcastic. You know, I'd, I'd say shit like, um, uh, The mailman, don't tell my <laughs> husband. You know, my husband was standing right there. And I was like, But don't tell him, you know. And don't then <laughs> one, one woman came up to me and says, What is she? And I knew exactly what she was asking. She was asking about what race is she? Of course. But I decided to play stupid. I said, oh, she's six months. <laughs> People are disgusting. People are really, really disgusting. And, and it, it doesn't matter. A baby is a baby is a baby. And if you are a parent to that baby, you're a parent to that baby. Um, you know, we've, we've had people question like my role you know, cause I'm the non-caring parent and you know, people be like, well, do you feel like she's yours? I'm like, first of all, she looks like me and we don't really know how that happened, but yeah, you know, like it makes no difference. You're right. Like, you know, a bait it's, it's your baby who cares. Yeah. And, and you know, I mean, just think of how, how you, and I, I hate to make this comparison because it really isn't the same, but just think about how much people love their pets. They did not give birth to their pets. No. Their pets don't look anything like them. The if they do, they need to, you know, have problems. That's in a tweezer, maybe. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a story. <laughs> Some laser or hair removal, perhaps. Yeah, slight. <laughs> they might have to have a, a little waxing done. Yes. A little, yeah, a little lip, a little lip wax. Yeah, yeah. But you're right. People, you know, people are so invested in their pets, and there's nothing wrong with that. Pets are wonderful. But if you can give that much love to an animal, um, what's why can't you give love to a, a baby? I, I'll never understand it. And I know there are people that will 
fight on both sides of this equation and there really should never be two sides of this and no you know no. and and i i can tell you that you know they all put me through hell at various stages in their lives of course they they all have their they're all brilliant she has you know it's funny because she has so many of my traits now i don't know it's because she's a virgo also so it's okay. very possible that there's something to be said for you know the astrological signs or whatever but she's so much like me in so many ways so that nature nurture thing you know i mean a lot of it's nurture yeah yeah, yeah. incredible but then after you adopted, um, you ended up getting pregnant again. I was one of the stories I always hated hearing. People would always say, oh, once you, have, once you adopt, you'll get pregnant. And I was like, I don't, you know, I want my two babies. I'm happy, you know, zero population growth. I got my two kids. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy. And, uh, you know, then I ended up being one of those stories. Unreal. Yeah. Well, it's, it's an amazing story. And, you know, I, I'm so happy you, you shared it because really, again, people don't talk about that kind of scary stuff enough and they don't talk about adoption and they don't talk about racial, you know, inequities enough. And these are things that should always be right out in front of you because they're yeah, totally really, really important. It. You have yeah. to, nothing gets better or easier if you don't. So I appreciate you sharing that. Um, and you've really, you know, you've teed me up for my next little, my next little ditty over here. But I that uh, so you are the mother of, even though you don't know their ages, they are grown adult children. Um, and as you know, that is both my greatest fear in life and my biggest point of pride is that I know I'm raising uh, one hell of a little girl. You know, she's going to grow up to be a shit kicker and will take crap from no one. Uh, exactly. Even if it kills me, that's, you know, that's the, the environment we're creating for her is to just be herself and be wonderful. I know that's the environment you created for your children as well. I can't even like fathom the experience. I mean, is, is it something that you struggle with now having like adult children, you know, going from babies to adults and letting them be their own people or are you the type of person that's that's really okay with it i was never a, a helicopter parent I, I i felt that my job was to prepare my kids to function in the real world um not to do everything for them mm -hmm. so i i was never you know i don't know if you'll know this re reference because you're much younger than me but i was never june Cleaver. much Yes, much younger. Thank you. I I was never Do June Cleaver. I was never. I do know the reference. Okay, but. I, I was never your fifties mom. I I didn't get any joy out of baking, and I didn't. I did not keep a, a neat home. The doctor told me my kids were all allergic to dust, and I said, "Well, give them some medicine because." <laughs> Well, the when more I you're around it, it, yeah, you grow out of your allergies if you're around it enough. Exactly. They'll be fine. Yeah, they'll, they'll, be fine. They'll, they'll grow out of it. So you know, I. So I, I kind of um, did hope that that I gave them the seeds to grow, but I didn't, and I, I wanted them to be happy and I wanted them to make choices that made themselves happy, yeah. not necessarily what made me happy. Um, but that being said, there were times when they made decisions that I was not happy with and that I really wish they hadn't made those decisions. And, and I felt a lot of guilt about things, mistakes I had made and things I had done that maybe if I'd done, you know, shoulda, shoulda, woulda, did it differently, but then they wouldn't be the people they are today. So whatever crap we went through, they came out the other end okay. So, yeah. so it's okay, but you know, we, we some rough times i bet well i know you also had like some real real funny times so yeah. you like you know you said like yeah yeah I'll, I'll come on the show boy do i have some stories for you um give me like your two give me your two like funniest your two funniest oh well, well one of the one i didn't tell you okay i thought of after was uh my oldest was was um sick and he was home and we were cuddling in bed watching good morning america um and 
they had those teasers on, you know, and one of the teasers was, did you, did you ever wonder what you should tell your children if they asked you if you did drugs when you were a child? Well, stay tuned and we'll tell you how to handle that situation. So Stephen looks at me and says, mom, did you ever do drugs when you were a kid? <laughs> You're like, I'm still doing them, kid. <laughs> <laughs> wait, I have to wait for the I have to wait for them to tell me what I'm supposed to say. So he grabs me by the face and he goes, Mom, just tell me the truth. Did you? <laughs> oh yeah, I did. <laughs> and then they proceeded to hold it against me the rest of my life. Whenever I tell them, you know, you're partying too much, oh, I'm not as bad as you were, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> I'll my child will be able to use that against me too and that's yes. that's a real kick in the ass yeah, she's I was like you know if I knew then what I know now I wouldn't have did it you know and that there's a big difference between you know smoking pot and doing crack and you know and uh you know some things are physically addicting but some things are mentally addicting and you know and I gave them all those talks but um they had to dabble themselves to figure it out most people do. Yeah. Most people do. Uh, and so you told me another story. And I think this is super funny because your daughter is biracial, that you were in a store, I guess, and she yeah. got mad at you. Yeah, we were, in, we were in the Green Acres Mall. Or was it Roseau Field? It was one of those. Okay. We one, of the, one of the local the malls, malls. Yeah. And I had told her she couldn't have something. And she was getting angrier and angry at me. And she threw herself on the ground and started screaming. And so I went to pick her up and she says, don't touch me, you're not my mother. And she started screaming, get away from me, get. And these people were looking at her like, oh really? I'm <laughs> really I am. But yeah, that, that was a fun one. But the, oh. the best one was when um, she got me really pissed off at one point and I kind of smacked her upside the head like that. <laughs> yeah. Which I know you're not supposed to do. Eh. It happens. It happens. Um, so I kind of gave her a smack and she called the cops on me. <laughs> <laughs> the cops showed up and I'm sitting on the front step waiting for them. And she comes out and thank God she started giving them an attitude. So the <laughs> cop looking at me like, Okay, I see why you hit her. <laughs> he didn't say that, but he kind of. You knew, you knew what yeah, he thought. I, I, we kind of had that look, you know, like, do you see what I'm dealing with here? He's like, yeah, I see what you're dealing with there. So yeah, I got, I was not carried off in handcuffs, but that oh was a run. Well, I'm glad. I had a run in with, uh, with cops. Did, I did you? you? Yeah, I mean, three o'clock in the morning, my son comes into my room and says, mom, I got to tell you something. I said, what? He says, well, I was by the gazebo and um, the cops came and, and they, they, they caught us smoking pot. And I said, oh, great. He says, yeah, well, the, the cop, he, he made me empty my pockets. And, and you know that condom you gave me? Well, he found it and he asked me where I got it. And I told him that you gave it to me. And so then he said, well, your mother sounds like a really decent human being. So why don't you go home and tell her and I'll meet you there in 20 minutes. So oh, no. then he looks at his watch. He says, so he's probably here now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So I had to go, I had to get dressed, go downstairs and talk to the officer about my, my son that got caught smoking pot at the gazebo. With your condom? With my condom. Unreal. Unreal. Well, let's let's start to, to wrap it up here. Thank you so much for coming on. I have two final questions. So the first question, I'm, I'm just curious because there is like, a, there's an age gap. Your, your children are somewhere between the ages of, I don't know, one and 31 based on your math. Uh, my daughter is one. So what is something, and maybe it's what you remember from them being children or it's something that you love now. What's like a, a thing you like couldn't live without um, as a parent or even just as a person? Well, now, obviously, it's what everybody would say would be the phone. The phone, <laughs> yeah. Um, alcohol and drugs come to mind. <laughs> <laughs> but they're not legal, so. Yeah, um, we'll leave them out. 
Yeah, and I can't find them anymore. Uh, <laughs> You know, I almost invite, I, I almost invented the double stroller because one of the kids would be in the stroller and the other kid would be all upset. I'm tired. I'm tired. I can't walk. I'm too, you know, so I, I would take a scarf and I would make a little sling in between the two arms of the umbrella stroller and put the kid in it. And had I marketed that. Could have been rich. I could have been rich. We have a whole different conversation. Damn it. Yeah. I've been making you pay me to come on my show. Shit. Yep. All right. Well, we lost out on that one. I guess we'll just do this for free. Um, yeah. All right. Final, final question. Uh, what is something you know now that you wish you knew before becoming a mom? That you're not alone, that everybody's going through what you're going through and that, you know, you're going to make mistakes and there's going to be coulda, shoulda, wouldas, but you know, there's only one what is. So don't worry about all the what ifs, just deal with the what is and try to stay in the moment and really enjoy that moment because I, I know it's so cliche, but it really does go so fast. It goes so fast. And, and a lot of it's a blur when you look back, you know, and the kids ask me, well, what did I do when I was this age? And I'm like, I don't know. Just, I, I know we're supposed to be cutting it short. Go ahead. Just the other day, my mother-in-law was here talking about the time that I, I dropped the baby down the stairs. And- Oh, I the called, time as it like, okay. Well, it happened twice. <laughs> <laughs> Only twice? That's oh, good. The full, the full flight of stairs. <laughs> But I call, she's a nurse. So I called her up. I said, mom, you know, the baby dropped on, you know, the floor, you know, what do I do? And she's like, well, check the pupils. Are they dilated? You know, we went through all the steps before I picked him up to know that he was okay. But I couldn't remember which kid it was. <laughs> <laughs> so my mother-in-law saying it was one of them. And I was saying, no, I think it's the other one. <laughs> Listen, being a mom is really fucking hard. It is. And sometimes you drop your kid down the stairs and you just don't remember which one it was. And that's I motherhood. I live to tell about it and they're exactly. fine now. So, you know, fine. they're fine. Now it, makes, now it makes a good story. That's right. Now it's funny. Well, thank you so much for being here. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Please be sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Have a great night.